So I definitely get what you're saying about not 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 having that direct help. Like right now, I'm baffled that nobody has come up to me and said, "Man, I know where you're going. I can see, I can see what you're doing." You know, and and I got a job, two hundred dollars, man. You said what? I had two hundred dollars when I got out of prison. Oh yeah, that. me and my two kids and they mama. We're staying in a vacant apartment for a year and some change. Apartment that we didn't fill out an application for. My boy and his girl was managing the apartment. We're like, oh, y'all can stay there. You know, we stayed there for a year and a half until uh, until you know I went on Joe Rogan's show and 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 uh, he told me I should do a T-shirt because I thought Joe should look out. Like, yeah. oh, you you respect me like that, there? You you saying all this stuff you saying, but. You ain't gonna give me no money? You gonna tell me I need to do a t-shirt? Now I ain't got the money to do a t-shirt. You know, how I'm gonna do a t-shirt with no money. Right. You know, but I got lucky, you know, somebody heard it on on the show. Yeah. You know, and he caught me walking down the street and he was like, Hey Rick, I heard you on Joe Rogan the other day. And uh Rick Clock, you know, and and I didn't even know who he was, you know. He's like, Man, I heard you on Joe Rogan the other day, and I got a t-shirt idea for you. And I was like, Yeah. You know, to myself, I'm like, this cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rogan was right, talking. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. going to do nothing yeah. for you, you know. And uh, but I, I, I stayed humble. Yeah. And I said, "What's the idea?" And he said, "The real Rick Ross is not a rapper." And to myself, I was like the corny in the whole world. Yeah. But I stayed humble. Yeah. I said, "Okay, let's do it." Mm-hmm. He said, "Oh, I'll, I'll design it. And I'll print it. I'll do everything." So he did it. All you got to—he told me all I had to do was come and take some pictures, and I did. Uh, we went and took the pictures, um, and he gave me a hundred t-shirts. That man was doing work. Give me a hundred t-shirts. Yeah, I saw all those t-shirts the same day. You saw a hundred t-shirts in one day. One day. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I went and flipped them. Yeah, yeah. I took the money right back to him. <laughs> right. <laughs> do that right. again. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that over yeah, again. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. By the way, uh, at where can they find that T-shirt? Is that T-shirt still available? Yeah, yeah. You can get it off my website, too, freewaywrickyross.com. There you go. Support. And that's why I always tell people, um, you know, if somebody means something to you, take care of them while they're here. Don't wait and, like, till they've been passed away. Oh, yeah. You know, like, That's why I don't go to front rows. Yeah. All that extra. Nah. You go to front uh-uh. row and they be talking about, oh, man, I wish I would have did more for you. And, like, stop lying. You know, like, you <laughs> <laughs> you don't wish you'd have did nothing. You would have done it. You'd have did it. Would have done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I, I agree with you there. Now, I was actually I had a question. It's ironic. I was going to ask you: Do you feel like you might be in a Keefe D situation to where it's like, you know, you out doing podcasts and the feds is there watching, you know, taking notes, and then they hit you with another case, but you didn't already been Keefe D. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You didn't already. He didn't already got you with the Keefe. They can't get me like that no more. Huh. Like, <laughs> matter of fact, he should have been watching you. I should be talking to Keefe. Like, you think, you, you think you'll get Rick Ross? <laughs> man, that's wild. Good Lord. Okay. Yeah, they got me with the Keefe D. Oh, man. One thing you mentioned in your personality that I definitely have in my personality, there's a, a number of reasons that I'm happy to have you here. Number one, because uh, internet nerds are like, that person's not a gangster. That person's not a killer. That person's not a drug dealer. It's like, You've obviously never done any of these things because you'd be shocked at what these people look and sound like. Mm-hmm. You'd be absolutely shocked. But one thing that I heard you say that is also in my personality, which can be a very good thing or a very uh, dangerous thing, which is that you go all in. You had mentioned that you know you when I do something, I I, I go in. Yeah, I'm obsessive. It. Yeah, exactly. You know, when I eat, I, I I'll eat the same thing over and over and over and over 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 and over and over and over. Right. In in um. That's the way I do with everything. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you think that factored into, because you didn't invent crack, but no. but you were the best marketer of crack, as you say. In the early days. Yeah. Yeah. He was a pioneer in, <laughs> <laughs> he was a pioneer in the crack movement. But uh, how did that factor into you being successful? Because as I experienced you, you mild manner, chill, low key, you know, speak up and, but you know, you don't seem like the guy that you coming in and you know you shaking the earth and work in the room. And well, here like, you so- are. You got a guy who who when gas was like fifty cent a gallon, he couldn't put gas in his car. And 
now he gets an opportunity to make two hundred dollars every day. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. You go from not being able to put gas in the car, not being able to buy pizza or soda, to now you can you're making two hundred dollars profit every single day. Mm-hmm. He's gonna think it's a gift from heaven. Okay. And I I believe you know like when you believe that something comes from heaven, uh-huh. you wouldn't almost die for it. Hmm. If somebody tried to change that. Okay. Going to jail is not a deterrent. I mean, you know, a real, a real true Christian, if they told him that they couldn't carry the Bible anymore, or they was going to kill him, they would die for it. Cause that's really. Oh, you what, met a true Christian? I don't know. We leave that one for the day. I mean, go well, let's say the Muslims. Yeah. Okay. How they? Right. How they? Yeah. You know, they gonna die. go all the way out. They They'll die all the way to go out. to get yeah. their seven yeah. versions. Yeah. Whatever heaven. they get, they going for it. Yeah. They going for it. They <laughs> yes, really sir. believe. Now that's what I call a real believer. You know, when you're willing to to die for it. Yeah. And that's how I believe about selling crap. Oh man, that's religious fervor with it, huh? Yeah, I was willing to die or kill. You try to stop, you gonna try to stop this? Mm. I will kill you. Mm. And all my guys, they'll kill you too. Mm. Cause they gonna ride with me. And this is not a rap record, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is real life. Say no more. So it's, it's that level of dedication that takes you to the next level. It's not. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like you really that. committed. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things you have mentioned too, and I think that especially uh, black folks, and this is the mainstream in general, you have mentioned someone that used the term crack, and you're like, no, nah, we call it Ready Rock, which is also in Baltimore. They call it Ready Rock. Yeah, we didn't call it crack. Government it was only when the, when the government, when we found out about the government, they was calling it crack. We just called it Ready Rock. All we did was mix baking soda and, and cocaine. Oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, right now. This man giving out recipes over here. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> that recipe everywhere. Everybody like, got that recipe. Like, then you take the quinine. <laughs> <laughs> that recipe so old. Yeah, hey, that yeah. recipe so old. Right, Everybody right. got that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I first started, yeah. you had to pay for that recipe. Oh, you, you had to. You had to pay for the game. Back oh, ain't then. no question. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They, oh no. At the beginning of it. When I learned, they charged me seventy five thousand. For the cookbook, yeah, that's that's a different. Era. And I paid about three different people to get it right. Yes, that's a different era. Yes, so it's a different era. I mean, you got to pay for what you want, and if you got the money, that's what you use it for. Yeah, to buy your position. And a lot of folks don't know how to use money as a tool. That's all it is. They get emotional with the money. They don't right. realize it's a tool. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. So uh, here, here's a good one, actually. Um, what have your experiences been on the other side as a drug consumer? What has your experience been with that? I consumed for about a week, maybe two weeks. I, I didn't consume long. Uh, what were you consuming? I tried cocaine. Okay. Yeah, I tried cocaine. When I got my first ounce. Uh-huh. Um, oh, friend. you got the product. The, you got your first ounce of product. You're like, let me see what this. No, is. my my friends and my my cousin. Oh, we can celebrate. You rich. You know, at that time, an ounce of cocaine was worth like nine thousand. Okay. It was cocaine was expensive as hell. Okay. So they convinced me. You know, hey, relax. Take it easy. You done did it. You you, so you get evil. a rich. You That's know. So evil. And uh, I tried it, and um, I got sick. Luckily for me, the first time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I ain't never doing that in my life. It's a blessing. A blessing. Yeah. In disguise. So, and then I smoked marijuana for about two years after that. Okay. That held on to it. Now, what made you give that up? Uh, a couple of things. You know, one day I'm riding with my kids in the car. I'm taking them to Magic Mountain and I looked in okay. the ashtray and I had a roach in there and I fired it up. And Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> And my kids looked at me like, Dad, you <laughs> shut up and don't say shit to your mama. <laughs> my own damn business. We ain't going to Magic Mountain today. Wow. So I saw myself being out of control. You okay. Know, you know, you it is addictive, apparently, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, they try to lie to us now and say it's not. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. it's addictive. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. 
I mean, you know, we can almost be become addicted to almost anything. Yeah, that's right. That's you know, right. If you put in your mind that you need it or you want it bad enough, you know, it becomes an addiction. Mm. And you know, one of the the reason I asked you this particular question, because there are certain things, um, whether it's experiences or certain things you you do in life that you you can't turn back from or you don't get a chance to be able to turn back from. Like sometimes that first hit, it got you. You're done. You're gonna do this for the rest of your whole life. Like I got an auntie Val, she's a dedicated crackhead. Mm-hmm. She's been a crackhead since I was alive. She's still a crackhead to like so she in downtown LA right now doing some crackhead activities. Um, well, you know, I had an uncle, he told me, huh, you don't have no reason to quit smoking crack. Right. Oh yeah. What what why should I? And I ain't, I, you can't, damn near can't argue with them. No. Because it makes sense. Like, oh, that's what makes you happy, <laughs> right? Because that's what people say, do what makes you happy. Yeah. Like, if that's what makes you happy. Yeah, no. And I just want everyone who's watching to really hear me seriously. Friends and family around you said, why don't you loosen up? Give this a try. Yeah. that's. I mean, that's usually who, you know, when I, when I go out and I talk to kids at school and, Cause you know when they do the commercials on TV, they got this guy come over in a big black coat and yeah. hoodie on, right. and he sneaks up on you. Hey, little kid, you want some dope? But what I found out from my experience, it's usually your best friend, right? Male or female, mm-hmm. your uncle, mm-hmm. your auntie, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. One of those people are the ones who introduce most people to drugs. People who love you. The people who love you, and they introduce you to the one of the most evil wicked things that will destroy well, you know with, with with love and and with people they give you what they know mm-hmm. and what they think mm-hmm. is good and sometimes they just don't know that's why i say that stupidity is evil absolutely <laughs> absolutely know? yeah you know what i'm saying stupidity is an it's, actual it's probably evil. the root of all evil yeah mm-hmm. you know it all starts from stupidity you know, they try to say money is the root of all evil, but I I, I, I argue that with, I think it's the like of money because you never see anybody with a suitcase full of money go out and rob nobody. I've yet to see that. <laughs> but, but if I did, like, this man is passionate about robbing. You know what I'm saying? He like, like Pac said, I got money, but baby, I got to get more. 